Hey everybody, I'm just going to do a quick video here that's going to really be just kind of a precursor to my next video, which I think is going to, is really discussing one of the most important aspects of maybe wildlife photography, uh, photography in general for that matter, but specifically um, what I like to do most is take photos of ducks. Um, so what that next video is going to talk about is how to shoot in manual exposure and how I set up in manual exposure. Um, what you need to know before you do that is two things. One, you need how to you know how to use the meter on your camera, built in, and you know, need to know how to read the histogram on your camera. So, the histogram is essentially the little box that shows how much of any given, um, how do you say it, level of brightness across your image you have. So, if you took a photo of the bright sky, you're gonna have a ton of stuff, depending on how your exposure is, a ton of stuff pushed way over to the right, and that's gonna mean that all in the right, that you have all the bright images, the bright tones, I guess you'd say. So all the way in the left, you have complete black, and all the way in the right, you have complete white. So when you have complete black, you have no information in on that, that part of the photo. Um, that would be like a complete shadow, or something completely silhouetted against a sunrise or a sunset. So there's no way that the camera is gonna pull up any kind of detail off of that. And you generally don't want that, especially in wildlife photos. And on the same side, you also don't want the all white because then there's no detail and just a big white blob. Um, and that's not good either. Um, it's typically going to be the sky is what's going to be the brightest thing in your subject. And you usually are not going to want that to be all whited out. So you need to learn how to read that histogram. When you look at a histogram, um, I'm going to show you a few examples here. Um, the first one is going to just be something with a lot of shadow. Um, it's a decoy that I took with my exposure set too low. And you're going to see most of the information is off on the left side of the screen. There's a little bit drug out to the right, but it's very low in terms of coming up high off the bottom of the graph, meaning that there's very little that has on any kind of bright exposure. Um, the middle one is kind of how you want things. You want all your, your data for the most part on a typical photo when you're done with it to be right in that middle. And then the next one is um, overexposed or close to overexposed. And that's actually how I'm going to end up shooting my photos and I'll tell you why here um, in my next video. But you want that push to the right. Um, so how you're going to ask now how do I know and how do I change how my histogram looks? Well there's three things that affect your exposures, your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO settings. So for my, and I'm going to talk about this more coming up, but for my photos, I typically leave my shutter speed set at 1 over 1600. Um, that is basically just a constant for me. If I had a way that when I'm out shooting duck photos, your average duck photo, if I could just leave that fixed and not allow myself to change it, whether I bumped accidentally one of my switches, I would love that. Um, secondly, your aperture. I tend to leave that somewhat fixed um, on my camera that I have. It's a 5.6 is the maximum aperture when I'm at 400 millimeters. So I tend to leave that shut because that allows me to keep my ISO as low as possible. So now, when I get to a spot, my ISO is the one thing that is typically going to move. And how I learn to move that is by using my meter inside of my camera. So when you look through your eye cup and through the viewfinder, uh, whether you have a Canon, an Icon, a Sony, whatever it is, there's going to be a little thing that moves on the bottom. There's going to be a center spot on that. Typically, I think they show two to three um, lines on each side. A lot of times a little bit, a couple smaller lines in between there to kind of show you exactly where you are. What those are is called stops. So it'll usually show two to three stops that you're over or underexposed. And wherever that your line moves back and forth on there, that's where the camera thinks your exposure is for that exact subject. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that exactly what I'm metering is what I'm metering. What I think I'm metering is what the camera is metering. So I set my metering to spot metering, and you should be able to figure out how to do that in your camera. So set your meter to spot metering, which will put a tiny, tiny spot, typically in the center, your center focus point, is what the camera is going to use to meter. So as that moves around in the sky, 
versus the sky versus say a black part of a decoy, there's going to be a very significant difference in where your readout of your little line is on your meter, whether it's all the way to the right typically or maybe even off the screen to the right in the sky or down on the left for a dark object. What I'm going to tell you how to do here in the next video is how to set your exposure so you don't have to mess with it very much throughout the day and how to read the different subjects. Um, so I think, like I said before, I think that is probably the most important thing that you can learn how to do on your camera and that's a technical aspect of shooting maybe along with focusing but that's something your camera does so i'll talk about both of those here coming up uh, i'm going to get on to the manual exposure video so tune to that and thanks for watching